Hello everybody and welcome once again to Mechanism 110. At the end of the, at the end of the last episode, I basically upgraded this yet again this thermal evaporation plant using this resistive heater. It's, it's a quantum and entangler bought a good old whaler. Now this episode, I'm going to rebuild the tank that I built with the thermal evaporation plant I used before, and this time we're going to basically put it down here and what I'm going to do with this is and to try to make some lithium dust so we just need to do fillers in there's just a the bottom there as you can see and um, I'm going to fill this in as the normal pattern I think this time I'm going to use solar panels because we're in the desert and that's the best place for solar panels I've got some spares in case I want to go down a bit um, we can do of course the valves, I don't want any more valves, I don't think I do want some of these, the solar panels I'm just going to put them on the outside like this and then we should have one thermal evaporation plant what we're going to do with this though is to pipe instead of piping in water we're going to pipe in brine so in my magic box here I should have some mechanical pipes And we're just going to connect these two together like this. And I've got to take the configurator and make that fill the fluids and then simply push the brine out of there into this thermal evaporation plant. And we should be getting into here now. Bit of that, get the potatoes on it. Some liquid lithium. I think we'll also upgrade this immediately as we're using the resistive resistive heater. So let's do that got a new resistive heater I'm going to put that down say um, here I think I had to go the wrong way wasn't sure and we need some more cables to right go around the machine so we want some basic universal cables to go around here and we'll start at this side here and just work our way around oops wrong one because I'm in the wrong mode I'm in fluids I want wrench right try again get cables out selected this time step back a little bit here like that and then come around the side here if I can reach that is which I can just gone round and I think I'll put another energy cube onto this as well and turn this around because we've got now we're in mode I can turn that around and we want to put a valve in here okay we'll do that as well it's quite safe to break this in fact I can't reach that let's go in there and get that yes we can good that's probably why I got the extra valve in here for the thermal evaporation uh, for the resistive heater at least two in again and go and get the energy cube we want that I think I've got one prepared somewhere or oh, maybe it's my magic box yes it is All right good bit of faffing around but never mind not the first time it's something you tend to do anyway so we'll put that we'll put the uh, energy cell down here facing the box so that we want it like that I've just got to put my uh, magic box down again haven't I try to select the right one this time and try again and I think I've just connected that upwards we'll soon find out let's go to the configurator and I go to energy We'll see that it is in fact the output side. So I want that to be rotated to the front. So now how am I going to do that? I think I might have to I'll just break it again and put it down again. Probably the easiest way. If I'm standing here it might work better. Ah you see now it's got lit up, which means it's worked. 
So let's go in here now and get some basic thermo thermodynamic conductors and connect that to this. Right, so that now should be working. If you if you're never sure about this, which is which can be problematic sometimes, so you, what you do is you right click on here like that. So we know the left hand side faces, um, or what we're facing us now is the output side. So if we make the back grey, that means this side here can't do anything. So if we take the energy um, configurator here, set to energy, you can see it's grey. So you know that's the right side. So it is definitely correctly configured. So this will be simply producing lots of lithium now, hopefully. In fact, it's already filled up with 10 buckets and it's starting to collect some brine and the temperature is rising nicely. So the next thing we want to do is we want to store the lithium, of course, so we'll make a dynamic tank here. In fact, I want to have another valve here, but we'll do that in a second. So let's put the tank bits down. I'm going to make a straightforward, actually, I will do it like this. Oops, missed twice. And I want to remove this one too. I'm going to put structural glass in the places that we... that don't have to be... which can be visible, which you can see through basically. So that's basically the whole frame. That's the one I wanted to remove, wasn't it? Let's go and pick up that piece. So that's the frame bit built, and we'll put down the other valve down. Oh, I haven't got one yet. I need to quickly make another valve. I'll put it down here. We'll see why in a second, because we need to actually make some other parts as well. So that should... I want to make it three. Yes, I did want to make it three, didn't I? Like that, and then just fill in the top bit here. With structural glass, we'll take four more of these. Now, what have I missed out here? Because it didn't say it informed. It hasn't formed, so I messed up something somewhere. Ah, not put any glass in this side. There we go. So now I'm going to take the lithium liquid and I'm going to pipe that into this tank. And then we'll get a reasonable storage of lithium over time, which is great. We need that eventually. Set the configurator to fluids because at the moment it was on wrench mode, I think. Energy. So that's now filling up this tank with lithium as a liquid form. As you can see. Don't see anything yet because it's going to the large volume is 48. Pretty big tank really. And this will now be empty again, which it is. And you'll see the brine is going down because it's Is it going down? Yes it is going down. Which actually means I probably could change these to being a different quality of pipe to actually keep up with the, the in, with the rate, but it doesn't matter for the time being. So there's two more things I'd like to make before we start doing the um, industrial boiler. So the first thing I'm going to make is we're going to make the rotary condenser this which we made before so we need four glass one tank one gas tank I haven't got a gas tank I don't think so we need some osmium ingots I probably need also these things let's take them out before we start the main ones anyway we need some iron I guess okay so we need a gas tank we only need one we need a, a basic fluid tank which we've got already made that before uh, we need an energy set, an energy tablet like that. And we need some glass as well. I forgot to get the glass out of here. 
So we should have enough to make the rotary condenser. We also need a chemical crystallizer, which is this one, which is actually a reasonably high tier machine. So we need two more gas tanks. And I was a shift. Oh, strangely enough, I just had enough. So we need. What, do we, what are we missing here? Nothing, it looks like. So we can make the chemical crystallizer. I'd already prepared the rest of the stuff, I think, so that's why. So what we need to do now is we need to connect these up. Um, I'm going to find a way of getting this power out of here as well. So what I'm going to do... Oh, I didn't make the tank, did I? Uh, the valve, did I? We need a dynamic tank valve. So I'm just missing the control circuit. That makes two. Moving things around a bit. So I'm going to drag some power out of here, I think. Probably here. We'll use the same. Um, power as this coming out of for the time being anyway later on we'll put some more power into this as a as a better way of doing it so let's just put some power down here and come across like this until we get to here move the torch out of the way because I'm going to put these two machines down here like that and then I'm going to put the torch back again because we don't want mobs spawning not particularly anyway so so now I'm going to take the valve out of here. I mean, put the valve into here. Uh, it looks like I can't reach that piece of that. Really? Irritating, it's too far forward. Let's just pick it up. No big deal, actually. You'll see in a second. If it, having done that, even though I removed part of, two parts of the tank, it hasn't actually going to affect it too, much, too badly. So I just want one of the valves in here, like that. The tank forms, and if we actually quickly have a look at this now, You'll see that the liquids already remained in there, so it's still got 99,000. Put that fill us in again, like this. And then we'll just take this pipe here. What we're going to do with this, let's have one mechanical pipe here, like that. And we're going to push lithium out of here too, so that wants to be, oh, that's right, just configured correctly. So push it, I want to pull it out of there. And I'm going to put onto this the rotary condens condensator. Such a mouthful, that one. Like that. And that's connected up. And what I want it to produce, you see the power's coming in. And, sh no, yes, should also be getting the liquid, so it's probably turned around the wrong way. But it's in concentrate concentrating mode, so we want it the other way. We want to deconcentrate. Oh, so liquid's coming in fine, look at that. And then that should be producing lithium gas. So with the lithium gas, I'm going to put that into the crystal chemical crystallizer here like that. So this time we need some gas pressurized pipes, which are these. I'm going to put one of those down there. And hopefully, this is the wrong way around. We'll just turn this around so we need to get right to the the wrench will rotate mode, I think wrench is the best. And then that connects up. And let's have a look at move that out of the way. Here. So now it's actually producing lithium dust, which is what we want. When it's produced a lithium dust, that sulfur dust, lithium dust is Looks a bit similar actually. Let's have a look. I haven't made a sawmill either. This one. And the uses of this is basically to produce the induction cells. So the induction cells basically are the same as the. Um, that's a in basic induction provider. This is basically a souped up version of the energy cube. So this is basically, this will take 2 million joules and this will take 1 giga 
joule, so that's basically 500 times more capacity. But you need this lithium dust for that. The energy tablets we've already made and the, and the energy cell too. We'll need that for later on. So when we actually start to produce big lumps of power. In fact, I've actually got too many of these. Let's just remove this one out of here. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to produce an industrial turbine. But before we do that, the industrial turbine I'm going to produce is going to be a 5x5. Five five. I'm going to put it here, I think. And it's going to be around about this size. Like that. I'm just using torches to mark it out. And then beside that, I'm going to put in here a, a boiler. And it's going to be this sort of size. I'll run out of torches. Never mind. Um, it's going to be one, two, three, five. So it's going to be five by three by six high. So let's go and start doing this. So what we need for this, we need some structural, some structural glass, and we need some boiler casings, and I reckon I need 54 boiler casings. So let's go and have a look at what I need for that. So, so that's basically steel, and that will produce four. So we need 54 steel plus about 18 iron. I've got not quite enough iron, so I've got plenty of steel. In fact, I've got already prepared a whole load of materials. So I'll just take another half a stack of iron, that'll be plenty. And the rest I think I've got plenty of at the moment. Oh, sorry, I should have shift clicked that, shouldn't I? So that we want. 54 of those. 56 will have to do. And we want some of these. We need three boiler um, casings, so boiler valves. So you'll see why in the next episode. Was This wasn't it. Need two of those for that. So let's produce four and some structural glass and we, the last thing we need is some more things not the last thing we also need some uh, actually while I'm here let me get rid of some stuff I don't need I don't need these with me at the moment we need some um, superheating elements which we've already made a few times we need three of these so we need copper and redstone So 12 copper will be fine, and we need some redstone. I'll take a stack of redstone. And we need some pressure dispersers. This one. So for that we need uh, 12 steel, one... Okay, it's not a big deal. We need three of these as well. So we need 12 iron bars, which I've got. And the rest of this, I think we've got to put enough steel here. Eight. No, nope, we need some more steel. We need three of these. So what we've got is boiler casings. I haven't got enough. Oh, well, maybe I've got enough boiler casings. Anyway, let's see what we got. And if we if we messed up something, I'll just have to come back and make some more in time. There's also a light in the way, I'll move the light out of the way I'll put the light here for the time being hopefully it'll reach where we are so so what I'm going to do now is to, to place this all down like how I want it so I basically want it one block back from, from there and we'll place down a floor of boiler casings again that and that basically should match up to this 
That's what I want to do anyway. And then we basically create this, and I want it to be, um, in my case, I want it to be six high. So that's the first row. How many have we got? That's probably four, five. That's right, I think. And then from there, we can go around like this. In all of these mechanism um, multi-part buildings, you always need. Um, let's see if I can reach that one. Can't. You always need the frame of the thing to be a full frame of the standard blocks. I don't think you can use other blocks in any case. Is that right? I think that should be right. Yes. So there's the frame built. Now. In the middle here, I'm going to put some structural glass down here like this. I may maybe made too many rows of that. Doesn't matter very much. In fact, on this side, I do want a valve possibly. And then here, we're going to put some superheating elements down here. Move the potatoes out of the way, like this. And I'm going to put another one down here like that. If I go back a bit further. So that forms, you can see that forming nicely. And then one row above this, I'm going to put the pressure dispersers. These ones here like that. And that separates the water from the steam. And then what I'm going to do with the valve. Well, basically the way I'm going to configure the, um, the industrial turbine is so I'm going to recycle back the water. So I want that to come in here. And here I want to get the steam out. So I want to get the steam coming out here and I want those not to join. Mechanical pipes you can't colour. And here I'm going to feed in water from a pump. So, oops, Mr. Mist. Oh yes, I know what I did wrong there. I've got the structural glass down here. I'll have to knock this off one time, both of them in fact. Like that. So I'm going to put that like that. And the rest of it I'm just going to fill in now with structural glass. I should have sufficient structural glass for all of this. That side should be already done. that and I think there's oh, gone a long way around there's one last side to do this will be this one and this should be the last part but I didn't see it doing its forming tricks so maybe I've missed one no I haven't has it formed check no it hasn't formed I must have missed something out here Oh, yes, I have indeed the top. We want to put them some structural glass in here too. Now it should form. Right, it has done. Then the interface for this is fairly straightforward as usual. We've got water on this side here and we get steam coming out here. So let's get the water into that next. And I'm going to use the, the same energy from here as well, so we'll use this. So we'll make a quick well around about. Uh, let's have a look here, I think. And I'm not going to go down more than one layer this time. And I'm going to bring in the energy from over here. Basic universal cable, I'll need some more of that. I think I've got another 64 already prepared for that anyway. Oops, wrong. I heard it go click and I didn't pick it up. I didn't go and check my inventory. It's rather annoying when it re replaces one thing with something that it shouldn't be replacing because you know you end up I was supposed to do that something to do with inventory tweaks, I think, so I'll have to fix that at some stage. So we want the pump coming in 
here like that so it feeds into here so I want the pump connecting to that I haven't got the pump or maybe I've got the pump with me let's quickly check no I haven't got a pump with me I just have to go and pick one up I have made one and we want some water too don't we so I need a couple of buckets of water and the pump which I should have already prepared in here yes I have Let's just move those out of the way and put the pump buckets of water in here. That's why I actually put these these tanks, the fluid tanks there, they're great for that sort of thing. Can't get over that like that. So now we want the pump down here like this. Connecting to that. So that now feed will feed directly into that. That's fantastic. And we'll also put the, some water down in here like that. So we want one bucket of water there and another bucket of water here. So we now have a infinite water supply. And then I just move my chest to where I like it. I should also get inventory tweaks to put that in the bottom right hand corner. We'll need some energy upgrades for that. I'll put those in first. In fact, I can do the same for the lithium machines over here because I haven't done that yet either. So let's just let's get those out of here too. I've also prepared some speed upgrades, but I'm not going to put those in just yet. Because I reckon by the time we get around to producing the industrial turbine, uh, the need for this stuff, we will then upgrade it. But we'll have lots of lithium dust. In fact, we've probably already got nearly a stack of lithium dust doesn't really need upgrading that much so now we need some mechanical pipes we just feed that into there like that and that should start to put water into this tank as you can see water is now coming in now the next thing we need is the fuel wood heater now do I have that with me no I don't but we made one last episode so I'm not going to, it'll be just in this thing here. So I'm not going to make another one. We've seen us do that, but we can just also take a stack of charcoal while we're doing this as well. And the idea here is to produce some steam. This light's also in the way. Move that out of the way. That's exactly where I want to put the fuel wood heat. In fact, I'll put the light one row back here like that. So I'll put the fuel, fuel wood heater down like this. And then we'll connect that to here. I could actually put it directly on, on the side of this, but I decided not to. And I've got no thermo, thermodynamic conduit here. There it is, only one of those put it down here the reason for that is that if I, if I want to extend this and put more fuel wood heaters then you've got you just need to put more cables around the side of it like that and put some more heaters beside this so let's get this heating up slowly like that so you'll see the fuel, go, fuel starts at 750 and then goes down for each piece of charcoal charcoal and coal have the same fuel heat that it generates there's no good putting a resistive heater on here because the intention is that we actually produce power from the industrial turbine so therefore we're using power to produce power which is, doesn't make any sense well it does if it actually gives you a positive benefit but mechanism doesn't it normally uses it a lot worse in fact I did a test and it was around about 20 to 1. So you use 20 times more fuel to produce one fuel unit on the other side. So that was uh, surprising. It's actually probably less than it should be. So here we see now we've actually got some steam being produced and the temperature is nice and hot and the water still. It's about right actually, it's about fast enough. We could actually maybe even speed up the water in here because it's got no water in here 
and I think eventually we'll need speeding up anyway if we get this thing running at full anywhere near full speed so we'll just put in two of those I think I think two is a reasonable good number for one pump with solar panels in fact the energy may well be actually go down now let's have a look I know it's maintaining the energy and the fuel and the water should be going in here now it should actually be increasing even though yes you see now it's sort of increasing even though the fuel wood burner is actually working so that's it there are obviously things you can do with this but the tank itself is reasonably you could make it bigger in all directions up to the stat uh, up to the mechanism size which is 18 18 18 18 is the maximum size of anything in that mechanism so this is actually much smaller than it could be it could be three times higher and three five at least two and how many have we got 15 two and a half, three times wider and longer is it can be huge but we don't need it huge unless you've got a large number of people on the multi multi-user server or something like that so that's it and for this episode next episode we will do the industrial turbine, which is a lot more complicated than this. So until then, bye for now.